David Neely here, Executive Bourbon Steward. For this episode, I'm going to recommend the Perfect 36. It's an amazing cocktail. It's a blend of whiskey, grenadine, lime juice. Shake it because it's got fruit juice in it. You're going to love it. The reason I'm recommending it is because the 36th Amendment was ratified by Tennessee and all the ladies in the suffrage movement were in the state house wearing yellow dresses, red flowers on their dress. This cocktail is a commemoration of them. Identify, adapt, grow, evolve. Welcome to another episode of Groom K, presented by Black Fly on the Wall. I'm here with another group of extraordinary gentlemen today having an amazing conversation about time and tempo, right? So again, like we, we usually discuss these topics and these conversations with long titles, but today we're, we're bringing in dynamic, bold words that represent the essence of men, right? True gentlemanship and um, time and tempo are, are things that men must master um, to be successful, right? Managing your time how you look at time, your concept of time, and your tempo, meaning how do you gauge when is it time to turn up, when is it time to slow down. And um, we're going to make sure that we dive into this conversation and get going. Um, but first, I'm going to introduce uh, my co-host, Sam, go for it. What's going on, y'all? Sam Archer, co-host, Black Final Wall, co-host of Groom Cave, man. We're so happy to have y'all here today. Absolutely. P, introduce yourself. Pierre Bless, all things Black Fly on the Wall, spread love is the brand. Absolutely, and we got some a dynamic gentleman here, Deshaun. Introduce yourself. How y'all doing, man? My name is Deshaun. I'm an entrepreneur I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm just here to get fine, get active with these gentlemen right here. Let's get it, Deshaun. It's a you got a coaster there right in front of you. Let's uh, flip that coaster over and read what's on the back. It's hmm, a great question. Uh, I like it already. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to receive love? Mm. Answer that. Yes. Yes, I, I know how to receive love because emotional intelligence is a high um, characteristic for me. Uh, empathy and, and understanding who the person is and how they teach is another way, a form of, of you expressing love. Um, you understanding these people and they expressing this love to you. So if I know that this person is being intentional about expressing themselves to me, I could be able to reciprocate and be able to affirm exactly what they're showing. Like, I see you trying. You might not be perfect, but I see you trying. Boom. You said two, you said, you said, um, two big statements there, emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and empathy. Mm -hmm. I think emotional intelligence is something as a man that you learn sometimes, and unfortunately as men, we learn emotional intelligence uh, sometimes the hard way right, through breakups, through losses of relationships. And a lot of times we learn about emotional intelligence in retrospect, right? And so I think the biggest thing about uh, shaping and molding the new generation of men after we've mastered ourselves is by really teaching, all right, you can be proactive in understanding and learning emotional intelligence, right? You can be proactive in understanding how you process things, how you download things, right? You have an issue with a friend, you have an issue with a colleague, a business relationship. It may not always be best to engage in that, in that conversation right then. Sometimes you need to sleep on it. Sometimes you need to gauge your tone, going into it with a different perspective, being open-minded, right? And so when we're talking about the characteristics of who we are as men, we have to be able to pull out of our bag, you know what I mean, of those characteristics and the things that will really represent us for who we are. So I appreciate that. What, what is emotional intelligence to you? For me, it's awareness, right? I think it's, it's and I think just knowing and un being able to understand, for me, that's emotional intelligence, right? I can, I can improve it. I can, I can do different things to get better at it. So it's like what I think I know versus what I'm willing to learn when you tie them in together, that's what I get for emotional intelligence. Does it mean that you feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think emotional intelligence is knowing how to feel your emotions. Emotional intelligence is being dialed in with who you are emotionally. It's, it's, it's being able to look at your emotions on the, on the higher plane, on the higher self. So a lot of times, like in healthcare, we look at things from either a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach. A bottom-up is working your way up. You know what the problem is, and you're building off of that. Top-down approach is saying, all right, let's be proactive about this problem or this situation, and let's work our way down to the details of it. A selfish person really doesn't, they lack emotional intelligence. A selfish person lacks emotional intelligence. Yeah, they don't take a step back, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not that you don't love me, you just don't love me the way I receive love. Like, and I know that. So instead of me judging you and saying, you don't know how to love, I'm gonna teach you how to love me. You know what I mean? Let me challenge y'all on that though a little bit. Um, I think that somebody who's selfish 
does has a sense of emotional intelligence because they are aware of why they are doing what they are doing. If they are aware. If they are aware, but most of us, you know, are doing the things that we are doing because of something. And most of us tend to get a, a reward for it, a dopamine hit out of it. So like, um, anytime that somebody's done do something negative to your standard, it might be positive to their standard, so they're getting a hit mentally off of it, so they will continue to do it because they're getting reassurance from that feeling. Correct. So because um, it's all about polarity, right? Correct. So not all not all times looking at emotional intelligence is it about um, the cozy side of it. Somebody can be actively engaged in being selfish, intentionally. Like I'm gonna be like, let's, let's, I, I like I like that. I like I like that because I've had moments in my life where I was intentionally selfish in order for me to grow. Because a lot of times, if you spread yourself thin and giving, 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 you're not really able to lock in and hone in on yourself. So sometimes being selfish has a negative connotation that it doesn't necessarily need. Being selfish is sometimes needed in order for you to master yourself, in order for you to elevate yourself. Being selfish is not going out with the boys. Yeah, most men's achievements came through selfishness, right? You gotta lock in, you're not going out, you're saving money, all those things go into. You're not concerned with what nobody yeah. else got going yeah, on. Yeah, it's all about me right now. Right. Yeah. Being selfish can be self-love too. So if we're looking at it from that sense, just like you were saying, then that's the sense of emotional intelligence as well. Also got the emotional intelligence to not try to give love and be selfish at the same time. You know what I mean? So it's like, if I know I'm in a season of just me, I shouldn't be dating. Why am I dating people that I can't give love to? It's, I need to just be me right now, and that's okay. Most of us right now are scared to do that. They don't want to totally cut it off, so they try to date and try to be selfish, and you end up hurting people in the long run. So you need to have the awareness to not engage in, in things that you cannot 100% commit your time and efforts to. And like even to transition, like even to transition into time, right? This episode is about time and tempo. Deshaun, what would, what would you say your concept of time is? Well, there's this book that I want to refer you guys to called uh, We're All Doing Time. And it talks about how we're all in our way stuck in some form of a prison because we can get locked into a perspective which is is um, controlling us. We, all of us can look at the same painting and see something completely different because of our perspective. Well, I look at time in that manner. What you put your focus to is where you will put your time. Mm -hmm. um, as a man thinketh. Yep, as a man thinketh. Another great book. Yes, sir. So I look at time in a way where it can be controlled while it not be controlled at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 the, it's the ability to let go and to, and to be. Yeah. And that's another way of sometimes we, sometimes we get st stuck in the rat race of time. It's because we're trying to control something that's uncontrollable. Versus if you shift your perspective on what it is, right? then it, it completely shifts your ability of, of going against the grain of time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. You have plenty of time. It's all about how you master and balance the time that you have. I appreciate y'all uh, dropping them reads. I'm a, I'm a, I ain't even, even never heard of that. Yeah, I like that. But one of my favorite books that like completely changed my life is time is a thing. You can't buy it back, you know, once they go away. But the thing is, you got to be focused on the present. If you focus on the present, that's the only thing you control. And that's when your emotions don't go left, they don't go right. You just, if you happy right now, you focus on that. Like what happened to you right now? A good way to set yourself uh, in a good place that I learned actually from Rhonda Byrne and uh, The Magic, I believe. But, uh, and then I dropped the, the original book, The Power of Now is where I'm headed, being in the present. Ooh. But uh, The Power of Now, so you're in the present. But what I learned from Rhonda Byrne and The Magic was that if you count your blessings, if you're in a negative mood, you know, a way to change your emotion is to count the things that you are thankful for. You do that, just keep going. How can you be mad in those moments? Because you can't change the future. You can't look back in the past. And if you're looking back in the past, then you keep yourself in the internal hell or per se prison. So, Time is the only thing we can't get back, man. For sure. Sam, how would you, how would you, how do you look at the rhythms of life? I mean, it's just, it's like a good song, right? You have you have the beginning, you get the bridges, you get the end. It's all a journey, right? And even when we're looking at our life and how it portrays the time, it's all a journey. The time that we have on this earth, you can sit and say, I'm not where I want to be at this age or I didn't get to experience the things that I've done. But like you said, once you have gratitude and you look back over the time that you've gotten every day to grow, to build, if you've really taken advantage of it, you're not going to look back and say, 
oh, I regret doing this, or I wish I would have done that. You're going to say, actually, I came in, I took advantage of every 24 hours that was given to me because tomorrow is not promised. And once you've experienced loss, I think you get a little bit more perspective on that because you realize I'm running out of time, but not in a bad sense, not in a sense of I need to hurry up, I ain't got much time, but it's like I need to take advantage of the time that I have left. You, need, you also have to be present in, in the moment, right? Like that's what the power of now is about. It's about understanding that getting rid of the concepts of past, present, and future and understanding that all moments are in the present. Because when you were in the past, you were in the moment, you were in the present. When you were in the future, you operate in the future, you operate in the present. So it's all about the now. And if you consistently remain and put yourself in the now and shift your mindset about that, it also shifts your mindset about time. And I think the biggest thing about, the, the biggest reason why I love the word rhythm is because um, not only is it a universal law, but also um, it's synonymous with tempo. Because it's very similar to you stand on the beach and you watch the tide go out, you watch the tide go in. That's something that's gonna always be present and existent. And if we're able to look at nature and apply those, the laws of nature to our own personal lives, we won't be upset and we will limit our expectations whenever um, something goes wrong and you're dealing with a challenge or something goes right and you're also dealing with the high, you realize that life is about those, the seesaw of, of highs and lows. And as soon as man expects that and sets his expectation to that, he's now able to live in that now and live in the reality. Can I add value to what you're saying? Um, even when you say as far as in rhythm, um, I'm a personal trainer, so one thing I, that I teach people is train in phases. Um, phases is just like the seasons of, of where we're at right now, like we're going into the fall. So this is the phase of letting go. So going back into the original question that what, that I um, read, to receive love, you got to know what this person's phase of their life that they're going through. There's four phases of life. We got um, spring, summer, fall, winter. So if somebody is in a spring, they're fruitful, you know what I'm saying? If somebody's going through their summer, they're at the peak of day, but they gonna come down eventually. And if you're emotionally aware of them coming down, you will know how to be able to treat them and receive that love. That's all a rhythm. We all have a phase that we go through in our life. And if you're aware of the phase that you are in, you can not only show up for people, but then you can also, you know, put your best foot forward in those moments at that time to, to get what you want in life. I you love it, bro. That's where I was, uh, I was headed with. I got like two things actually. But to reel yourself back into the present, you don't want to put yourself in the past, you know, because you're there. It's already gone. The future, you can always bring yourself back to the present. You can even make your future your present. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you focus on your present right now, all the things you're grateful for, you know, bringing that bliss to yourself, you focus on the past, you're going to mess yourself up. You focus on the future, don't do that. But if you want something in the future, you need to feel what you want in the future right now. Mm -hmm. And speaking to that point, like a lot of us live three lives. We're living in the past, we're living now, and we're living in the future. We're concerned about what happened in the past, we're worried about now, and we're worried about what's to come in the future. And a lot of that time, a lot of times, that's why a lot of times you can be unbalanced as a man or a woman is because you're living three lives. Whereas you could keep life simple and really focus on the now and shape and sharpen the things that's on the now. It's so easy to worry about the past, to be concerned about what happened in the past. It's so easy to be anxious and worry about what's to come versus realizing you can have the, the level of awareness to where if you really, really focus on the now, you can control what happens in the future. It shifts your whole perspective. I was about to get on rhythms, um, vibration. So that's how I look at it. You know, you always want to be on the right vibes. That's why it's so popular, you know what I'm saying? Everything, the music you listen to, the way you work out, that's all a rhythm. Everything is vibrations. You laugh and that's a vibration. You cry and that's the vibration. What do you want to send out? It's the vibes. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to come back. So when I think of rhythm, I think of being on beat and being on beat is being consistent. Which way do you want to be consistent? Do you want to be negatively consistent or do you want to be positively consistent? You choose one and stay on that beat. But being on rhythm too is being in your stride. Like he said, when you're in your summer month, you're in your perfect stride. You, it feels like everything you throw out is, is a hit, right? It's like, we, as long as you're hitting that stride, you're good. But you gotta remember that stride don't last forever. So that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, I was reading a book called Dirt Rich uh, this morning. I just heard the quote. Um, it's a guy selling land, you know, and he teaches that, but he was saying, um, ooh, I lost my thought. But also, speaking of books, The Magic of Thinking Big, right? That's the book that my wife and I are reading right now. 
uh, by David Schwartz, and it was recommended when I was at InvestFest. Was at me and my wife was at InvestFest, and um, um, Robert S. Smith and Steve Harvey recommended it. And the magic of thinking big is all about shifting your perspective and your mindset on how you think and how you move. And so even even applying the magic of thinking big to time and tempo, it shifts your perspective on how you see time. It shifts your perspective on how you understand rhythm. And so a lot of times, many times, we lack the education of how to navigate through life. And the way that you learn and you master that literature is by reading and, di and divesting in those books. I found it. So it was 12 weeks. You know, people uh, focus on the 12 week like, you know, it's 12 months in a year. It's like, oh, we focusing on this year, you know, it's 12 months in that, but the businesses or corporate places that perform better. They 12 week year. A week, the 12 week year. 12 week year. Because if you focus on 12 weeks, then you're getting to that. You're going to those quarters, but if you focus on the year, you're going to forget by the time you get the, you know, your rhythm is just going to be a uh, mundane. Yeah, sure. I could, um, to add all of the value that y'all saying, man, because we throwing books and you know, it's easy for us to sit on these platforms and throw out like, do this, do that, do this. And most books are filled with fluff. 80% fluff, 20% what you need. There's this book called The Ways of the Intelligent Rebel where it teaches you how to learn. So to be able to go back and do etymology on words, because we send some powerful words that mean a lot. And also it teaches you how to be able to, you know, find your tempo. Are you the type of person that go off a hypnotic rhythm. We got A, B, C, D, that's a way of learning. Um, we also got, you know, putting things in order, in abbreviation, that's a way of learning. That's also another form of a rhythm. So when we teach these young men that's coming up now today, I believe a lot of them lack the right teacher to teach them about time and tempo because the teacher is not aware of how these children learn. Yes, yeah, but yeah, because the, the you know, unfortunately, um, many of us, our level of education and the way that we learn was left to the school systems to teach us versus it takes an educated parent, like you were saying, to have that awareness of, you know what, I need to assess and see how my child learns and then create that framework at home so they can then take that out into the community. And so we have to continue, like you were saying, we have to relearn how to learn. And so as we even apply that to relearning how to manage and understand time, that shifts our perspective on time. Sam, I want you to uh, flip over uh, the coaster that you have there and we, you will close us out with that one. Ooh, pick one. Spend time with family and friends or be solitude and why? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough because you kind of need both of them. You, you got to pick one. Ah! All right, so I'm going to say... So spending time with family and friends? Yeah. I'm gonna say being alone, isolated. I'm gonna say spend time with family and friends. And why that's important for me, it's all about, you know, my, my background is different from everybody. So I moved away from my family when I was 14 and moved to North Carolina. So the friends that I made, the people that I've encountered, they have become my family. So I often felt like, you know, I was missing time. I wasn't up there for birthdays. I wasn't up there for holidays. So that's that's a love language to me that fulfills me any like the best way that I can even imagine like spending time with people making memories with people because at the end of the day that's all we're gonna have like that that fulfills my heart so spending time with family and friends over just being by myself even though I, I love both I think you need both but spending time with family and friends making memories um, and just enjoying each other's company I'm going with that one first absolutely yeah. but raise your glass fellas amazing amazing conversation time time and tempo um time and tempo is important you know saying who understanding who you are as a young man Deshaun, i appreciate your perspective on um relearning how to learn um learning your learning styles it's funny that you said that when i was in graduate school that's what my research was on taxonomy taxonomies and learning styles of students so pairing the right professor with the right group of students. And that is shift of students' trajectory on how they learn because you're not just going to those students or to the group of students with a blanket way of presenting yourself. But nah, you can almost go Montessori style and really and really tap into who that, who that student is. So time and tempo, uh, rhythm, vibration, honing into who you are as an individual, all dynamic, bold words that, um, that we can master as men. So shout out to Uncle Nearest. You know, a true representation of intention um, and, 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 and time and tempo. Much love.